My altar is calling in you, oh God. His name, Father, we worship you. Thank you, faithful God. Thank you, precious Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Exalt his name, exalt him. Just just talk to him. Don't sing, just talk to him. Don't sing, just talk. Just acknowledge him, he's faithful. Don't sing along, just acknowledge him, he's faithful. Alamanambom Frebikaro Banashta. Keep talking to him. Yes, he's attending to your worship. talking to him.
Just lift up your hands. We'll sing that song just a few times. Lift up your hands. say that very quickly. Lift up your hands. We need to go to the Word of God very quickly. We need to go to the Word of God very quickly. But something is happening here and the Lord is breathing upon there are two particularly that he showed me or he spoke about. Actually more than two but one has been found. So he's breathing upon certain people and he's saying that your altar has been dry and I see the Lord breathing fire upon dry altars I see the Lord breathing fire upon please don't be distracted nobody is you didn't come here to watch anybody so leave them alone I see the Lord breathing fire upon dry altars so it's going to be like fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, like a fresh baptism of the Spirit resting upon people. Okay? Yes. A fresh level of God's fire is resting upon people. And while it was two that the Lord spoke about or began to tell me about, as we were contemplating on that, it became obvious that there are many people here who need fresh fire. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we open up the gates of the fresh baptism of your Spirit upon every one of us. We are desirous of a higher measure of your fire, even in the place of prayer, fellowship, and building intimacy with you. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's the Holy Ghost. 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 The Holy Ghost. Opening up a river to this dryness. Oh, young man, it's time. Young man, it's time. Young man, it's time. It's time. It's time for you to swim in the river of his freshness. It's time to swim in the river of his freshness. Thank you, Jesus. From the right.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, our hearts are open now to receive from your word. We ask that you speak to us expressly. I'm seeing something in my spirit. I'm seeing something that looks like a pool, like a river of the spirit. And I see like the Holy Ghost is tearing that pool. And I see that a young man has been expected to jump into that pool. But there has been some reluctance. There has been some reluctance. And then all of a sudden, I see that the Holy Ghost pushed the young man into the river, into the pool. I see that the Holy Ghost pushed the young man into the pool. Now, so that means that there's a young man in this place now who is about to get drunk in the spirit. Of course, it can happen to anybody, so don't say because I say a young man. There's a young man in this place who is about to enter into something that is bigger than him. Help, help. Father, in the name of Jesus, we open up our hearts to you in this few minutes. We ask that you do to us as you please. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Please sit down. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I apologize for, uh, I know we're hearing some echo sounds. I don't know. For those of you here, can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me? Can you hear me very well? Okay. I was hearing that when I sat down, but I know it has to do with probably the design and all that, but <clears throat> it's well. Thank you so much for coming. Um, even though it's not our usual Sunday evenings is Saturday for certain things we could not control at the moment, but we hope to be able to sort them out adequately as we move on so we don't have to have such issues. I know that it had to take a lot of sacrifice for some of us to adjust and be here today, so thank you for coming. Can you put your hands together for yourselves? You see, that's the problem. If, if we said that the president came here today now, I am say, can we celebrate him the way you will shout? I say, put your hands together for yourself. You know, you know sometimes some of these false humilities that we do don't help us. Hallelujah. You, you want to be... You want to be celebrated, you want to be accepted, but now when we say clap for your own self, you will not be doing this much more. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we began last week by saying certain things. I want to build on it. Briefly, we may not go so far today because it's Saturday and I want us to go back home on time. Probably we'll continue next week. Somebody saying that, don't worry about it. I worry. Okay, so 
And the last thing we, we, we started saying last week was, you know, we're talking about changing times and seasons. Hallelujah. You know, and then I began to talk about the indicators. When Jesus was speaking and Jesus now said, he said, when you see these things, he said, no, that the end is near. So there are such a thing, there are such a thing as these things. That when you see them, they are indicators of changing seasons. And I remember the last uh, example or demonstration I began to to be, bring up when I said um, I said three things that are indicators last week. Who can let's we're teaching, so let's build a class. I know that there are some people who are not here. They were here last week, but they cannot even because they were not hearing anything again at some point. You know, <laughs> so for those of you who were with us, who could hear, who can remember the three indicators I gave? First, first what? Even those who don't know, first what? When your desires change. Yeah, that's the first one. Then the second one. When your association change. Hallelujah. And I said that we must learn to be able to let people go when it is time for them to go. You can't keep everybody around you. Hallelujah. No, you can't. You can't. Sometimes the people you keep around you are the reasons you've not entered the next season of your life. Because, because it doesn't matter how close you are or how related you are to Lot. At some point, Lot will have to part with Abraham. Hallelujah. And that's true. Sometimes don't... It's not because anything is wrong. And sometimes it's not because the people are bad, like I said. Sometimes it's just that they are done with what they came to do. And so the last one I said was what? When the word comes to you. And so I used an illustration to begin to explain that sometimes... God would want to do something with you or something or God would want to maybe send his word to you for transformation and all that but before that word comes the word of God will keep trying you he keeps purging you he keeps digging into you to ensure okay to ensure that you assume the posture that will make it conducive or possible for your word to meet you. Hallelujah. I'm sure we can remember that. And so when the word of God begins to try a man, please follow me. When the word of God begins to try a man, it is with the intent that he wants to bring you to a posture. And that posture is meant to prepare you for your word. So when seasons want to change in the life of a man, there are so many things that probably, you know, you used to do before as a, as a believer, as a believer, of course. You used to do those things and all that. And you, you know, you are fine with it. God is fine with it. God has been speaking to you over several other issues and God has not said anything about that issue. And then one day, you just keep fellowshipping, fellowshipping with God and you advance into him much more. And as you are fellowshipping, all of a sudden, God now, God now begins to point at that matter. Hallelujah. Yes. It's a teaching series, so I want to build a little bit here. Then, by God's grace, next week we will wrap it up. So God now begins to deal with that matter. So, for example, you are born again. You know, you have been born again for five years. God has been telling you things, you know opening up secrets and mysteries to you. Then somewhere around the fifth year, you know, God now still comes. It's not like God has not been speaking to you all the while. Then God now still comes to you and all of a sudden God begins to tell you about the need to reduce the way you talk. Or God begins to tell you about the need to reduce or stop Engaging in abusive conversations or abusive languages. You are very used to cursing or saying all those kinds of, you know, vulgar stuff. And then God now comes and says, 
It's time to stop this. Like, why didn't you say that all the while? A lot of the times when those things are happening to you, it is because a season is upon you. That's the reason why you would see in Psalms chapter 1, Psalms chapter 1, The Bible said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. He said, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law, and in his law, that he meditates how long? Day and night. He stays on the word of God. Verse 3 now tells, he said, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in what? In his season, his season, so before he got to this point of his season, the word of God has been his dwelling place, his delight, day and night. So now we are seeing here that what the Bible is showing us with respect to this man, the Bible says, whose leaves shall not wither, of course, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see, this whatsoever he doeth does not mean that the man will just do anything he feels like doing and then the thing will just work. No, that's not what it means. It means because this man has been on the word, remember? Remember? So the word of God has already cultured him. So the word of God has patterned him. So he's not just doing things, not because, okay, he goes out and then he sees somebody doing POS. He is his friend. And then he sat down with the friend doing POS. And he found out that ah, he was not asking the friend. Or, you know, as they were gisting, maybe they were there all through. They bought corn, they ate, they bought, uh, uh, what else do you buy? Coconut, they ate, they bought, they even bought bitter cola. <laughs> they ate, while they are gisting. So at a point, in the course of the whole gist, he says, ah, it's like this business is moving. Oh. He says, ah, we thank God, it's moving. Oh. You know, so how much do you make in a, in a, in a day? And I say, I, I make like maybe, my profit is like 10,000. What? Then you now calculated 10,000 times six days. You didn't tell him this part of the calculation. <laughs> it was just in your own head. 10,000 times six days, that's 60K. Hey, that's Uncle Sam's salary as a civil servant. Oh. 60K in one week, then you now calculate times four. Ah, me, I'm going to buy POS. Then you now call somebody, you know, hey, that POS thing. Let's start. There's nothing wrong with it. But that's not what this scripture is saying when he says, whatsoever he do it shall prosper. The whatsoever there is on account of his interaction with the word. That he has been cultured by the word so much so now that at this point, you know, the word of God is alive in him. So even his thought pattern, okay, is patterned by the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the major tools or one of the major handles of your prophetic dimension whether you are a prophet or not this is for a, for a believer one of the major handles of your prophetic dimension is your thought life if you understand that it will help you one of the major handles of your prophetic dimension is your thought life so if you want your thoughts, okay, to be enhanced by God, so much so that God can speak through it and there will be no infiltrations, then you must ensure that you keep it clean. And one of the ways you keep it clean is by meditating on the word of God.
If God helps us, one of these days we'll talk about that. How the Bible makes us understand that the, that the word of God is sharper than every two-edged sword. To the dividing asunder. So the word of God has in itself the capacity to separate things from themselves. So you can know what is of God and what is not of God. If a man stays, okay, please, okay, you're following. If a man stays with the word of God and stays with God long enough, he doesn't even need to hear a voice to tell him when certain things are false or not. The word of God that has found root in his heart can separate so he'll be able to discern between good and evil. That's how sharp the word of God as a sword is. You know, okay, let me see if I can use, you know, if you have a knife that is not exactly very sharp, okay, and you're trying to cut, uh, you're trying to cut something into two. Two equal sides. Okay? You want to divide it into halves. If that thing is not sharp, I hope you know that it will be almost impossible for you to get an accurate division where it will be half. A part of one will enter into the other. But you see, when it becomes very, very, very sharp, like razor blade sharp, you will cut that thing and you will see it is, nothing will, nothing will enter. There will be no, do you understand what I'm trying to say? That's the word of God. The word of God is that sharp. When the word of God begins to separate things, you will be able to draw the line from when this is of God and this is not of God. So when the Bible said, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper, it is within the context of the fact that this man is rich in the word of God. So the richness of God's word in him has been able to identify what he must do. So even if you are doing POS business and your POS is, is doing well, okay, and then every other person begins to do the same and it's not working for them, Okay? And then you now come and you see this man. And you know, you have been advised, do POS. You live there, it's a good idea. It's a good business. You want to do it and make some money and all that. Or an investment that many other people are doing. Then you will now say, okay, this investment, okay, people are making money. People are referrals here and there. But the moment you want to venture into it, for you, it is a no. So you back out. And it may not necessarily be because you heard a voice particularly. Beyond just hearing a voice is that you have dwelt on the word of God. The word of God has become your delight. It is now your meditation. So because you have God's word, you can judge situations. So you just know that mm -mm, this is not for me. Good business idea, but it's not for me. And sometimes God may be able to draw your heart not to go into certain things, not because it is wrong, not because you're, you would have lost money if you did it or not. No, but because it is not just for you. He is going to guide you on your own. So he said, whatsoever that man do it as long as it is God that has directed that man whatsoever that man do it shall what shall what shall what shall prosper because it is the word of God that is guiding Whatsoever you do it, shall prosper. How are you going into this thing? It doesn't look like this thing is, is moving in the market and all that. But if it is God that told you, go ahead.
as long as what you are doing is not Yahoo or Yahoo Plus, it's not any of those this thing. It's not. It's, it's legal. Eh? If God is the one leading you, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Say I'm a carpenter. Say I can't. I don't want people to know that I'm a carpenter. Somebody's repairing generator, and then you say you don't want people to know that you repair generator. So you just hide and do it and all that. That's not how it works. If it is God that is leading you, see, be proud about what you are doing. You won't be there forever. Huh? Are you hearing me? You won't be there forever. If you are here, you come to fellowship, you look very good. You know, when you come, dressing very well. And then, um, during the daytime, you are a conductor in a bus. When you see a fellowship member in your bus, don't hide your head. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Hey, how are you? Bless you. Good to see you. You don't know me. Say, no, I don't know you. Say, oh, from the fellowship. From the fellowship. Good to There's nothing there. Somebody's going to say, hey. So he's a conductor. The Jesus that you worship, that you call his name, is a carpenter. Or was a carpenter. Yes. The apostle, the Peter that we shout about, say, look on us. And then him and John was a fisherman. Paul was a tent maker. Some people who want to modernize say he's an architect. He's not an architect, he's a builder, Libra. You know Libra? <laughs> Even if it, whatever, I, I'm just trying to make you understand something. As long as it is not, you are not, you are not an arm robber. Eh? You are not doing an illegal thing. If it is, if it is from God, whatsoever you do, you shall what? Yes. One day I saw a carpenter in, in this state, a carpenter. I say, if this is what carpenter is. Uh-uh. They didn't tell us now. We would have, if they used to read carpenter in school, we would read it. Yes. Whatsoever he do it shall prosper. From where you are, lift up your head and look. From where you are. Listen to me. If what you are doing is of God, you have not seen the end of it yet. Yes. If what you are doing is of God, you have not seen the Stop limiting yourself. Open up your mind to God and let God breathe upon it. Let God give you ideas. You may be a painter today. Don't limit it to painting. You may start making paints tomorrow and selling them. Whatsoever. He do it. Notice that the thing that the man is doing has not prospered yet. Are you seeing it? He say shy. So it means that it's not. You know, if they told you that you just got an oil a, a, a job a, a job in an oil company as a manager, even if they have not paid you salary, you already. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Hey, we don't need to say this one. You shall prosper in it. You are prospered. You will just continue to increase in this one. Hallelujah. If they call you now, Chinedu, and tell you that um, um, NMPC is giving you a um, job as a manager, you know, as one of the managers in this thing, will you, will you go and finish your project? They say the one that you have is enough. Will you, if us will call off strike, will you go? <laughs> say, just give us your... You just give us what you have. We can work with this. Then, they now, then tomorrow they now say, Asu has called us strike. Then your lecturer now say, all of you, your project, come and submit. And they told you to resume tomorrow. You will first send, you <laughs> you call that lecturer and say, send me your account number. Send me your account number. <laughs> Let me make you smile. <laughs> There's somebody here who was working for one man. He had worked for this man. He worked from morning to night, morning to night, morning to night. 
and this man did not they did not discuss salary so <laughs> when it was time <laughs> when it was time to pay the guy the man said don't worry i will i will send you something that will make you smile <laughs> when he saw his account, he saw twenty thousand. <laughs> he didn't go back to the man again. He, he, does, he didn't want to smile again, sir. So if this is how people smile, uh, sir, keep smiling, sir. <laughs> As for me and my household. <laughs> no, but an imagine whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And the whatsoever there is a function of the fact that that man has stayed on the word. It's not because he analyzed the market trends. Of course, it's good to know. There's nothing wrong with knowing. You have to know some of these things. It's, you shouldn't enter the market and be naive. All of those things, okay? So, but beyond that, be led by the Lord. Let the word of God guide you. Hallelujah. So, number four, before we advance, very quickly. Number four. On, um, we've said one, two, and three. On indicators is dissatisfaction somebody say dissatisfaction for the status quo a dissatisfaction for the status quo second Kings chapter 7 2 Kings chapter 7. All right, let's do one, two, three. The Bible said, Then Elisha said, I think we should read this together since this is a really building from one, two, three. Let's go. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, For tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour and two measures. In the gate of Samaria, yes, verse 2. No, we're not reading it, please. Verse 2. One, two, three, let's go. Then a Lord on whose hand... Yes, thank Okay, verse 3. And they said one to another what? Good. Let's go back to one, then we'll build from there. Now, this, this, the Israelites have been suffering at this point. There was serious famine in the land because of war and so many other things that happened. And they were under some intense oppression. And then at this point, the word of the Lord now came through the servant of God. And the servant of God said, then Elisha said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Because God is now speaking. Thus saith the Lord, the word is coming to them. Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. And this was too bogus. It was almost impossible for this to happen. In the natural eyes, this was not a possibility. In the natural eyes, no, this cannot happen in this season. You know, just like we are in this country now, and some people are already saying that there's, there can't be, Nigeria cannot, nothing can happen in this country. Let's just separate, let's just go away and all that. No, there's hope. This country is about to change. Yes, something is about to happen. What people would tag impossibility is about to become possible. And it will happen in our lifetime. Yes, we're coming to a season in this nation, in this nation, 
where the nations of the world will envy Nigeria. Yeah. Doesn't look like it, right? We're getting there. We're getting there. Some of us who have gone out of the country, we want to come back. You, you see? They want to sell their houses there and come back here. It will work. Now, but in this case, the prophet is saying that in the next day. Now, but meanwhile, those of you who want to go, you can go. Don't, don't say, ah, the way they are talking like this, are you sure we will not just go, go, go. <laughs> those who need to go, go. We send you forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> So the prophet now said, this is what God is about to do. Then in verse 2, Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned and sat the man of God. Did you notice what the Bible called that man? He's a what? He's a what? He's a Lord. He's a Lord. This, man's, this man knows the trend. This man is, is a stakeholder. So the man now answered and said, man of God. I said, behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but what? Thou shalt not eat thereof. But you see, the word of the Lord had gone forth, and nothing had changed. Then in verse 3, then there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. All of a sudden, this man, you know, this man did not just start staying at this gate. Are you following me? This man did not just start staying at this gate. This man had been there for a long time. All of a sudden, a dissatisfaction from these four, not normal men, leprous men, from these four lepers, all of a sudden, they now said one to another. It wasn't one person that just spoke. Did you, did you notice that there? The Bible said they said one to another. Why sit we here until we die? Question. What propelled this desire in the four of them? Because before now, there was nothing like this. They were fine. I mean, if there is anybody who should have been worried, you know, about the, pro the, the situation, it should have been people in the city who probably have been trying to do things and things are not working out, who you would term normal people. But now, leprous people are complaining. Imagine, imagine, imagine in this country now. Just imagine. That as we are, the ones who are hustling and trying to make things work, are not even the ones that are feeling bad or complaining about what is happening. It's the one who is begging you for things that is now saying, wait, 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 confess. This is our begging. It's not too much. Let's even... Imagine that one day, Michael, my son, you know, he, he's, Michael is like five years. One day, Michael just woke up in the, just wake up in the morning and just walking around the house. And then he now be pacing. Ah, ah, Michael, what's the problem? See, I've been thinking about the thing that is happening in this country. <laughs> is it you that will be thinking about? <laughs> no, I've been thinking. No, something needs to be done. That's, that's, that's an example of what you're seeing here. It's the leprous men at the gate. Who don't even know what's happening in the economy? Their own is just... They sat down and they were asking themselves what people in the city were comfortable in. Even the Lord, one, a, a man who the Bible referred to as a Lord, upon whose shoulder the king leans on, did not believe the word of the Lord that he heard. It was now four leprous men who did not even hear what the prophet said. All of a sudden, what God spoke through his prophet into the atmosphere and it began to change things. 
was converted to dissatisfaction in four leprous men. So the four of them did not exactly say what the prophet said. What they said that was a response to the word that God has spoken was why sit we here until we die. Of course, you know the end of this story. So I'm not going, in. I'm just trying to show you what happened here. So what was happening here to these people? And when this question came and they began to ask themselves that question that pushed them to go into the city and bring deliverance for an entire city was that a word has been spoken from God. But before that word will produce, certain people must be dissatisfied. So in this context, the word of the Lord alone will not produce the result. The response to that which God has said is that there must be dissatisfaction in the heart of a people. Sometimes in that dissatisfaction, you may not even know what you need to do, but you just know enough is enough with this situation. Let me show you this scripture, John chapter, um, Genesis 27. Genesis 27, 32. See something? Oh, I like this. The Bible said, And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy first son, Esau. Now, we know this story, right? Where Jacob had already gone, and then Jacob had cheated Esau, you know, had deceived his father, and he came with the venison that the father wanted so that he can receive the blessing of the firstborn. And upon, at, at this point, he had received it already. So Esau now comes to the father, and then when Esau came, Isaac was now asking him, Who are you? And he said, I am your firstborn, Esau. Verse 33. Let's move. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that? that had taken venison and brought it to me. And I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him, yea. And what? And what? He shall be blessed. There's nothing we can do about it. And when Esau heard the words of his father, and he cried with a loud, with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and he said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. And he said, thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing. Now, so listen, one of the things is not part of the message. But one of the things I discovered from this scripture is that blessing is not just about speaking words. It's not as if the words that were said, okay, cannot be repeated. It can be repeated, but the blessing is gone. We can say the same things we said before. Is it? Oh, no, let's leave this. Leave it. If we go there, we'll find trouble. So let's continue. The Bible said, and he said, thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away thy blessing. And he said, is not he rightly named Jacob? For he had supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. And behold, now he had taken away my blessing. And he said, Has thou not reversed, reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord. And all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? But one. Bless me, even me also, O oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be of the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Verse 40. And by the sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass that when thou shalt have what? The dominion. 
thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Let me see. Does anybody have an amplifier? Okay, no, not amplifier. Okay, maybe an amplifier or the message. I want a message. Do you have the message there? Okay. Do you have amplifier there? Just King James. Okay, that's fine. I just want somebody with the message. The message. The message translation. Please help me with a mic for this person quickly. The message. Who has? Okay. Let me take somebody who is close. It's fine. Yes. Verse 40. The message translation. You will live by your sword, hand to mouth, and you will serve your brother. You will live by the sword, hand to mouth, and you will serve your brother. But when you can't take it anymore. But when you can't take it anymore. You will break loose and run free. You will break loose and run free. The Amplified said, when you have become restive. I'm just trying to show you what this word, when you have the dominion, is what you do. The best way to explain this is what you do when you are, you are fighting with somebody and then maybe the person holds you on a particular angle or something. Then all of a sudden, you know, why energy just comes? You just begin to do anything to ensure that you break out of it. Do you understand that? You know that if you don't do something now, you will die here. It's a kind of restlessness. So, the Amplified is saying that, and when, even though I have said eh, that you will serve your brother, even though it has been released that your brother will be the greatest and all of you will be under him, but I, I show you a secret. There's a way you can break out of this course and this limitation. He said, when you can't take it anymore. When you can't take it anymore, you will break out. I'm trying to show somebody here that the reason why certain things have not changed in your life is because you can still take it. That the reason why certain things have not changed and you are still there, you are still is because you can still take it, you can still tolerate it, you can still give excuse, you can still you, you know you can still laugh around it. Oh, oh he said the secret to this is that at the point when you can't take it anymore, you will break out of it. All of a sudden, a dissatisfaction for the status quo, what is generally normal, has become personally abnormal for you. People may feel like you are being arrogant, you are being too proud, you are being too full of yourself. No, but the problem is that right now, I can't take it anymore. Sometimes the desire to pray and to, to break out of certain situations may not even be there. But just the fact that you cannot take it anymore is what will begin to spoil you to the place of fasting, spoil you to the place of prayer. It, it's, not, it's not to sit down and be crying. No, I can't take it anymore. We've seen countries that changed and brought revolution into their system because the people could not take it anymore. Yes, I couldn't. I couldn't. Nigeria was getting to that point. At one point, we were building, and then there was NSAS. Everybody was coming out and shouting and shouting. But they know that Nigerians can be very tolerable. So at a point, they just say, soldiers should just go to Lekki and go and shoot some bullets. So when soldiers went there, pa, 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 some people died. We say, okay, let's regroup. A, revo a revolution began in a country because a man decided to burn himself for those of you who know that news one time in Egypt the man set himself on fire now of course it's not a good thing but I'm trying to tell you that there are, there are levels of 
dissatisfaction that a man can have whereby at a point in his life he would have to come to that place where he said God if this thing does not change I would rather stay hoping it changes and die hoping it changes and live like this I heard a story about Papa Umau Kwai. He was the one that was talking about it. How that in the early days of his ministry, he began to fast and he will fast for 40 days for a whole month. Please, I beg you. I beg you. I'm using this as an example. I'm not saying that before your mother will call me tomorrow and say, you have not eaten for one week and they don't know what's wrong with you. But I'm trying to tell you that there are things you may need to do when you can't take it anymore. And he was fasting and fasting and fasting. And at the point, the wife was complaining. Do you want to kill yourself? And he made a statement. He said, woman, leave me. There are things I have seen in the Bible that are supposed to be for me. If God will not give them to me and use me as he said he will use me in his word, let me die. What am I looking for? When he can't take it anymore. Sometimes the secret to the breakthrough is that a man must become restive. God has told you, I need you for three days. Spend three hours, four hours, five hours with me. And then when you start, they, give, they call you. Somebody calls you and the moment they call you, you just you postpone it in next month. You can still take it. That's why. The things that you are trusting God to break out of, you can still manage your condition. That's why. You are still fine being powerless. You are still fine being under oppression. You are still okay that certain things can happen and these delays are not changing. But when you can't take it anymore, the yoke will break. This is Isaac having proclaimed the blessing over Jacob. The same Isaac declaring over Esau that you will be, you will serve your brother, you will be under him. He said, but how be it? He said, when you can't take it anymore, you will break out. Somebody needs to leave this meeting tonight. If there's nothing you will remember about this meeting, if it is just this one word, go with it. With the status quo, I can't take it anymore. And you may be able to say like Job, all the days of my life, I will wait until my change comes. There's no need for the excuses. It's not enough that you don't like what's happening to you. No. It's, it's not enough that you desire something higher. That's good, but that's not enough. Are you dissatisfied? What was the dissatisfaction with the level where you are? And what's the level of hunger that you have for the season that you are trusting God for? The tomorrow that you can sense or see your spirit. Tell your neighbor, say, I say it's not enough that you are tired of where you are. It's not enough that you desire a good tomorrow. What are you willing to do about it? Some of us are, are, we don't like where we are, but there's nothing we want to do about it. 
you just sit down there and then all you are saying is Kai things are not good things are not good this one is happening I've just been in a circle I've just been in a circle question what are you willing to do Here we saw that the prophet had spoken. And when the prophet spoke, he said, this is the word of the Lord. The price of things are going to change by this time tomorrow. And then four men, leprous men, said to themselves, why sit we here? Because even though the word of the Lord has been spoken and things are about to change, it will not just change because we, he, he said it. If men keep sitting down, nothing will happen. So men must get up, whether they are leprous or they are not. Whether they are well or they are not. When God has spoken, men must act in line with what God has said. And I've come to tell somebody here that the word of the Lord is hovering around you. That God has spoken that your season is about to change. God has said powerful things concerning your life. But now the issue is that you want to sit here till you die. It's not because the word of God was false. It's because you refuse to act. Why sit we here till we die? If those men had not moved, nothing will happen. God was waiting for the men to move. And the Bible made us understand, if you're a student of the Bible and you have read that story in, first, in Second Kings, the Bible said when they were moving into, into, the, into the, the city, the Bible said, and the Lord, ah, and the Lord made their foot steps to be like the chariots of an army. God can amplify the sound, but the man must make the steps. God has spoken. There's much more God will do, but God is saying, get up, lepra. Get up. Don't look at your leprosy. Get up. Say, no, the reason why we cannot enter is because we you know we are lepros. You know we are leprous. If, if people who are well cannot go into change situation, is it we that will change the situation? Why? Sit we here till we die. You are looking at men who you feel should be the ones that will bring the change in your life. And they have not brought it yet. You feel like somebody could do better. It's not about somebody. The word of the Lord has been spoken. Why sit you here? Man of God, what are you doing with the word of God that has been spoken concerning you? Kabariba supara, ekata banante proposkedi la babarida kusha. What God has said concerning you is bigger than where you are, is bigger than who you are, is bigger than what you look like. But the problem is that instead of you to look at what God has said, you are looking at the condition. I'm a leper. of the people where did they get the information that it is the armies from different cities that were brought together who informed how did the i don't know what to how to explain this where did that come from it's only god that does that one it's not about you your own is to get up and move there are some things you may never be able to explain but get up and move get up and move it may look very small but the word of the lord will amplify your efforts. Aya. It may look insignificant and inconsequential, but the word of the Lord will amplify your efforts. 
it is the word that has gone forth. You just keep walking into it. You may not do anything, but just walk into it. You are saying, God, show up. God, how will this thing happen? Yeah. How will it happen? Get up. Why sit we here till we die? It's not only the spirit that says come, it's the spirit and the bride. It's the spirit and the bride. Ay, 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 ay. Let me show you one scripture. Just one scripture. I, I would have done more, but I want us, like I said, I want us to go on time today. So we can build from next week. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. <laughs> Woo. Israel could not bring to pass four lepers. They didn't need a weapon. No. They didn't need a weapon. All they needed to do is to respond to the dissatisfaction that prophecy had put in their spirit. Why sit we here till we die and leave the rest for God? I don't know who you are. There's somebody here but I speak by the spirit of the Lord. Who would have thought that by this time next year, you will be feeding a hundred people and it wouldn't be as if anything is happening to you? Who would have thought? You don't look like it. Who would have thought? That in the coming seasons of your life, you will be the most sought after minister. Who would have thought? Who? Who? Who, if they told anybody, I would believe that you'll be one that people will be looking for from the nations of the world, and you are here, even in this place, nobody knows you. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I don't know who those lepers are. I don't know who those lepers are, but the word of the Lord has come to you. Your season is about to change. 
church and there is a dissatisfaction from within your spirit no this status quo we can't stay there anymore we can't continue like this anymore I can't keep doing this anymore who would have thought lepers are about to leave the gates and move into the city <laughs> ordinary me ordinary you who would have thought something is about to happen I'm instructed to teach this because seasons are about to change instructed to go this way because something is about to happen to somebody's life you may not look like it now but something is about to happen that will make you the talk of the town, the talk of the nations, that will make you the one that people will look up to. Men who have gone far ahead of you will come back to be mentored by you. Who would have thought? But the word of the Lord has gone forth. Verse 11. Verse 11. Very quickly. The Bible said, I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. <laughs> We've seen the fastest of men, but I'm seeing something now all of a sudden that is reorienting me that it is not the one who is the fastest that always wins the race. The race is not to the sweet. No battle to the strong. It's not the man that is the most powerful that always wins the battle. Ah. <laughs> it's a neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to the men of understanding. It's a nor yet favor to men of skill. But I found something. It's a mystery. He says it's called time and chance. Ah. Cabande sopre idabo. Time and chance happen to them all. Time is a commodity that is made available to everybody, but chance is to the man who identifies the time, prepares for it, and takes advantage of it. I found out. I found out. for skill. Thank God for all of those things. Thank God for quality. Thank God for abilities. But when a man is able to identify times and seasons and prepares adequately, that man can conquer anybody. It doesn't matter who he stands against. The race is not to the swift. The race is not to the swift. God for the best, but the best does not always come first. Ooh. He said, For the men of Issachar, they were in control of their brethren. He said, Because they knew, they knew what Israel ought to do. Time and time.
like I said, I want us to go. Somebody, somebody, somebody doesn't know what is about to happen to the, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, but you will just realize that there will be a dissatisfaction. I can't take it anymore. You will realize that there will be a dissatisfaction. I can't take it anymore. corridors of sin I have toiled around the corridors of fear I have toiled around the corridors of limitation but I can't take it anymore I can't take it anymore I can't take it anymore this mediocre life, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. Somebody go ahead and pray. Oh Lord, these seasons of delay, these circles, I don't know what it is your own, but some people are in seasons in their lives that they can't take anymore. This weak, help, help. This weakness in the place of prayer, I can't take it anymore. Help, help, help them. Sopendi Borata, Ragababam Rate Pombrieda, Racope Femena Combe, Radababombrieke Bapana Cope, Regedegedege Baradabalata Bampriada, Erugaba Help, Etabos, Redebepe, Regede Bebe Natobena, Regede Bebe Nacopera Dominata, Oh, Erumi Mape, when thou art rested, thou will break the yoke at the Bino. Rada babam bras kapa, rada bebe me na tobe na ka, rada bam bre kotele, rege dege 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 be rada balata, rada bam bras kope mambre, rede bam bra kope mamba, rada dada, rada dada, rada dada, rada dada, ede dege dege dega da ba rada balata de, rada da, rega da, rega de, rega de, rega da ga de ba rada balado ba na ga barate. Ah, a lot of bad. Eh, come on, eto bakambe kata sabarada babone kapa araga babamre ete babana raga da da do de 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 da da barada ba. Ah, 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 a lot more ada baya ayada babalada. Ayakada barada baba be, ada balaka baba baba rata, shabamba. Allah barakum, esobi nada barada bombri ete baba bombri eta mamande, elakata baba rata baba bombri ete baba mena ko, rege de 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 de, lakamomba. Oh no, no, no. Aya, this mediocrity cannot continue. No, this average life cannot continue. No, something is about to change. This delay cannot continue. Olabade, and when thou now hast the dominion, thou shalt break the yoke from off thy neck. Adabaradababe, shabaradababamra, temenamra, 
Pray, 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 pray. Pray. I No room for excuses anymore. I have dwelt on this mountain for too long. It's time to move. It's time to move. It's time to move. It's time to move. Under, Yes, yes, yes. Someone is about to bet a new season. Someone is about to bet a new season. Someone is about to bet a new season. Oh. Adela, 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 Adela. Oh, yeah. Hey. Ah. 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 Abatete, oraga da 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 barada bada da barada barada baga de, oraga da 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 barada bala kata. Yeah, yeah, alaba. Amen. Aduki diki 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 di. Diki 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 diki. Shaba, raba, raba, ete te pene barate. Ayo. I know that they said it's impossible for a man to break out of such a limitation. No, but I can't take it anymore. I know that they said that when a man has such an infirmity, it is incurable, but I can't take it anymore. They said when, when, when a man is, is, is SS, he cannot become AA, he cannot become any of those. No, but I can't take it anymore. 
They said when a man has this infirmity, it is incurable. You can only manage it. But we can't take it anymore. Oh, Rabbi. Shabbat Shalom. Pray some few minutes. We will leave here. Pray. Oh, Shekedabaradama. Someone is becoming dissatisfied. No, 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 no. No more excuses. No more. Barabala barada balada bam preyade. Rababa be prafeita ma. Rege de bambra stove namrata. Ela kobe babarade. E tababe rate. Rege de bambra stava. Rada be bebenako. Rege de pa. Ada. No, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. The power of sin and addiction must be broken from off my life. I can't take it anymore. Why sit we here? season is about to change in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus someone's season is about to change this if you can listen if you can listen There's someone here, there's someone here, I want to pray for you, I want to speak the word of God over you. Recently you had a dream where they brought someone who was crippled to you. They carried the person, a, a crippled person, something, the person could not work or something like that. Recently, it's a recent dream. Where are you? Where are you? You?
when they brought the person that was crippled to you to minister to to minister to and what happened what now happened in the dream you woke up but the person did not get up in the dream lift up your hand Can you remember what the person was wearing in the dream? You can't remember. It's a bright color. It's a bright color. Lift up there. Something is about to happen to you. The Lord is releasing upon you grace. To be able to communicate the possibilities that have been captured in your destiny amongst which is notable miracles impossible miracles and that season is upon you the season is upon you lift up your hands everywhere everybody lift up your hands everywhere there's a release impossible situations Lift up your hands and stretch it towards stretch it towards the altar. Just stretch it towards the altar. Something is happening here. Yes. As the grace is being poured upon him, men are his help, help. If you notice anything around you, please help before the ushers come so we don't break chairs. Just help. There's a release of grace. Seasons are changing. Please help them. Impossible situations. Mantevri esu falambrate Yes. Yes. What you see in the dream is about to become a reality. For in the day. That God turned around the captivity of Zion. They were like them that dream dreams. Help him, help him. Bring, bring, carry him up. Let him be up. They are like them that dream dreams. Fellowship, get ready. Strange men are rising from amongst us. Get ready. Strange men. Men who will command impossibilities in the financial realm. Yes, impossibilities in religion, impossibilities in families, impossibilities in the media, impossibility in economy. Men that we command impossibilities from the seven mountains. The fellowship, get ready, get ready. All kinds of men arising from amongst us. I
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. You see, if if you can if you can dare to believe. Ah. Ah. Second Kings 7 is about to be the reality in someone's life if you can dare to believe. Quit looking at the limitations. Quit looking at the limitations. Quit looking at the limitations. Something is about to happen to someone's life in this place. Your season is about to change if you can dare to believe. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, take that grace now. Let financial doors open to you. Take that grace now. Help, 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 please. to say this to you but a season is upon us I wish I could I wish I could a season is upon us mighty men arising from amongst us a season is upon us I hear the sounds of abundance of rain. I do. <sighs> let's go, let's go. In the name of Jesus. The fellowship, get ready. Get ready. Let's close. We need to go. We need to go. We'll trust the Lord to wrap up this series next week. I don't know how it will be. I don't know. But get ready. Ah. All you, all you need to do is just Take that step, take that step, take that step. Let's go. Please, all eyes closed. You don't need to sit, just stand. We don't, if you can stand, there's no need to just, we'll soon be out of here in some few minutes. All eyes closed, very quickly. Very quickly. Please keep your hands down. If you are here, if you are here and you are not born again, 
you don't need to come out wherever you are you're not born again or at some point you got born again but you backslided you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want to say I don't want to leave this meeting like this I don't want to I can't I can't afford to leave tonight without having Jesus in my heart and receiving his life or you're here and you're not even sure if you're born again or not and you want to say I want to be sure I want to make it right with Jesus today as all eyes are closed wherever you are you don't need to come out but just raise your hand I want to pray for you wherever you are you want to say I want to make it up God bless you my brother God bless you my sister if you want to join them very quickly a slip will be handed over to you as you as your hands are lifted you don't need to come out you want to join them very quickly I need to pray you want to say I can't I can't continue like this I can't we can't be talking new seasons and then you don't have Jesus in your life it begins with him there's nothing to be ashamed of if you're joining them very quickly as your hands are lifted join them keep your hands lifted don't keep it down if your hand is lifted join them very quickly I want to pray I want to pray oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you want to join them I want to pray I'm waiting for you I'm waiting for you I'm waiting you're the reason I'm still waiting you're contemplating if you should or you shouldn't don't play with your life and your destiny the journey begins with Jesus I'm waiting I'll count three for you one two three those of you whose hands are lifted and a sleep has been given to you I want you to just talk to God where you are you don't need to come out just talk to him say father I come to you in your own language you may feel like you don't know how to pray it doesn't matter just the way you would talk to a friend I've come to you Lord I'm sorry for my wrong cleanse me from all unrighteousness I'm sorry forgive me forgive me forgive me yes I will leave you to pray but talk to him I have come Lord I have come Lord I have come Um, round, round, begin to round up in Jesus name in Jesus name now I'm say after me say Lord Jesus keep your hands up just talk to him say Lord Jesus I come to you as I am I'm sorry for my wrongs I acknowledge that you died for me you shed your blood for me and today I've come to accept your life be my Lord and my Savior and I your sons and your daughter from now henceforth